So first, MRT stands for My Robot Time, and three mean we are dealing with the version three of their product uh, at this point in time. They have a website. You can go and visit to see other products that they do. The MRT3 system come at four levels that so you can see here. Uh, one and two kind of go together. And they actually sell uh, a combination uh, box where you can just buy one and two together also. And that's the one we're going to have uh, uh, for our series of work. Three and four are down here. They kind of uh, go together also. And the detail that will come up uh, in the rest of the presentation here. Level one or the foundation level, you can build 15 projects in it. You can see some of the picture here. The foundation level inside the, shall we say, the mecha or mechanical side of the robotics. Okay, and in here you can build some unmotorized project and you can do some motorized project also. They gave you two direct current motor here. It had a remote control receiver and a remote control itself. They give you two pack of batteries of about six volt. So you're running at six volt. It does come with a controller and it has pre, uh, is pre-coded with uh, specific uh, mode or specific little bits of program already built in and you cannot change that. In this foundation level, they use no sensor. And you can only do remote control of the various projects. In level two, it has nine projects. It's still using the pre-coded program on the controller. And they start introducing IR and touch sensors. So they give you two touch sensors, three IR sensors, and then also one speaker. Because we're using sensor now, you can see that in some of the examples, some project, you can start having a mix of remote control and some will show you autonomous behavior. In level three, or they call it intermediate level, you can do 10 projects. So yeah, you can see. This time they give you a second controller and this one is user programmable. And we'll get into the detail. You can see it open up new pins and new connector here. And we'll get into detail a little bit later. Of course, now you can do program custom code. And they introduce, they give you the first servo motor, two more LEDs, and one light sensor. And with this uh, project, with this level, uh, you start using uh, some nuts and screws, so you need to have a screwdriver. In previous project, the hardware all snap in. There's no screwdriver required. At the level four or advanced level, you can do nine projects as seen here. Of course, you keep on continuing to be able to do uh, your own custom code. They give you the second servo motor, they give you a buzzer and they give you a microphone and all these uh, actuator and sensor are using more battery power but they give you some extra batteries so now you'll be running at nine volt let's look at the main board and you notice i say board in uh, plural as far as I can tell, they're all based on the Atmel AVR chip. This is the main board for levels one and two. It has some software pre-coded in it. And uh, you can see that, that the way they're done is this way. You can see there's an um, on-off power button. There is a remote control channel setting you can do using a dip switch, so that three uh, dip switches, so that means you can have a combination up to eight channel. The right DC motor goes here, the left DC motor goes here. And the way they designed it, you can see that the RC receiver is it's in a very specific slot. And then you have like speaker 
or output sensor you can put a certain places but you also you can see that design so that all the input sensors that we say are on the left side of the controller they have a button for the mode selection that when it starts an LOD would display the actual uh, different piece of pre-made code that they have in there. Like for example, this one is some kind of uh, code number A, pre-code or uh, mini code number eight, and this is mini code number three, depending on what kind of robot you built and what kind of feature you built. And then there also a button to click the program start. So notice there's an on-off button separate from when the program start or not. On the level three and four, they give you a different controller. And at first glance, it looks the same, but they are not. So first they open up a PC communication port because you have to be programming on the PC side and download your code, the user programmable code down here. So you can see that that's where the connector is. They also arrange, real, uh, open up more connectors or more port. So the way the design is all the input and there are six input channel on the right side here. So you have your remote control connector goes there, your light sensor, your IR sensor, your touch sensor all stay on the right side. The right DC motor and left DC motor still in their previous places. On the left side, therefore, there are also six output channel and that's where you lay out all your server motor, LDT sensor, and speaker and stuff like that. You too. Regarding the hardware itself, they have uh, lots of plate. They design the same thing, all snapping type of construction. You can see they have some uh, special pieces like triangular and shaft block and crank block and. Uh, a kind of rudimentary gear block in the uh, level one and level two. So you can see you can build very good 3D looking robot here. They have lots of assortment of wheels, gears, and tracks. So you can see they have all kind of wheels. They have several sizes of gears so you can uh, can be drawing a uh, fair complex uh, gear train. It has sprocket and caterpillar track pieces, so you can build tracks. Of course, they also have special adapter to put the plate together or 90 degrees, you can see. For the advanced kit, uh, they have some more nuts, nuts and screw that you can use. Of course, to know to connect all these drives, they have a shaft different side of shaft and bushings as needed. So with the previous parts, um, you can build fairly complex gear train and you can build a fairly realistic caterpillar drive. You also have can do uh, steering wheel a rack and pinion type. And then we also have like this one here is the forklift and forklift actually go up and down. So they have a mechanism built in inside. So fairly sophisticated. Regarding MR3 software, I think it's the first one I've seen at XML base GUI. And I will have a separate presentation to go into the detail of the uh, GUI and how to do software uh, coding itself. Because it's made on XML, I think this is the first time I've seen that uh, a GUI that have collapsible code. Like for example, you see in, in this little portion of, it's the same piece of code between the two picture here. And this one here, you can see that uh, when you have a piece of code, let's say think about the IR sensor in the input one, if it sends something, the input to send something, and you see a closed form, you see the plus sign here. If you click on the plus, it will open up, that you're showing that there's more, actually more detailed code inside. And you see it's relabel all its uh, line item for you. So this is great for top-down programming.